Russell Cox is the first prisoner ever to escape from Katingle, the new maximum security section here at Long Bay Jail. He's also regarded by police as potentially the most dangerous prisoner ever to escape. The only man ever to escape from the supermax security prison Katingle was born Melville Peter Schnitzeling in Brisbane in 1949. And when he became a career criminal, he changed his name to Russell Cox. Like most professional criminals, Cox comes from a background of juvenile crime. He has spent the majority of his childhood in boys' homes. Inside the boys' home, Cox developed his violent nature. I suspect that Russell Cox was brutalised, was punished, I suspect he had a very difficult, rather challenging childhood, and he defended himself with the means he had at his disposal. He graduated from boys' homes to jail, doing his first three-month stretch at the age of 18. Personalities of people who get involved in crime quite often what they are is we call them sensation-seeking or risk-taking. They have low levels of natural arousal, and what they need is something that's going to give them a buzz. So crime, particularly crime that's risky, crime that's dangerous, a crime that also has good or big payoffs tends to be you know, quite buzzy. It, it does, it raises the adrenaline and to that end it meets the psychological need that they've got. Russell Cox was planning an ingenious escape from Katingle, the supermax wing of Long Bay Jail. Originally been sentenced to 12 years for armed robbery, but during a failed escape attempt, he'd nearly killed a prison officer. So Cox was transferred to Katingle. Cox being such a high security risk after the hostage taking of the prison officer was domiciled in Katingle, which was the, uh, the high security wing for the state's most dangerous criminals. Katingle was a very debilitating place. It was virtually a concrete blockhouse, a place that I would never have thought anyone could possibly escape from. He used to regularly train in the backyard of the, or the exercise yard of the jail and part of his training regime was to do pull-ups on the overhead bars. Ron Woodham was working at Long Bay as a guard at the time. Russell Cox smuggled a small piece of hacksaw blade in in a belt when he was out on escort. At court, he was given the belt and he swapped belts. He'd climb up the, the grill work there and do chin-ups on the bars on the roof. Just take the blade out for a, a couple of saw cuts every day put it back and just, just exercise. Climb up, hang on by one arm, saw with the other, and do a little bit of sawing each day. When he finally got that bar cut free, he was able to escape. Once onto the roof, um, Cox is scarpered over that, jumps over the edge of the concrete bunker, runs a short distance to a wire fence, scales that, runs another short distance, and scales another fence, and then he's had a couple of hundred metres to run to the brick perimeter wall around Long Bay over that, and then he's off. Police expected to have Cox back in custody within days. But six months later, he was still at large. They certainly didn't expect his next move. Perhaps as extraordinary as Cox's escape from Katingal is that six months after he broke out, he broke back in. A fellow by the name of Edward James Smith, better known as Jockey Smith, was also convicted and he was domiciled in Katingle. And because Cox and Jockey Smith had such a, a long association, Cox was in fact disturbed trying to break back into Katingle to spring the escape of Smith, but he was disturbed and again successfully ran away. His jailbreak attempt may have failed, but Cox would remain Australia's most wanted man for another decade. Cox is a master of disguise and can alter his appearance at will. He's known to have studied theatrical makeup and can use wigs and glasses to hide his true physicality. Almost all prison escapees are recaptured. But 40 years ago, without the benefit of facial recognition software or CCTV, the police relied on reported sightings. If you take any of the known pictures of Cox, there's nothing particularly physically 
striking about him to start with. He's also been able to change that fairly ordinary appearance, sometimes just with basic things like spectacles, different haircuts, different facial hair, seem to dramatically change his appearance. Hiding in plain sight allowed Cox to live a relatively normal life and to fall in love with Ray Bennett's sister-in-law, Helen Dean. She was a respectable nurse who knew nothing of Cox's criminal endeavours. When she found out, she decided to stay with him and embraced a life on the run. Despite being wanted by the police in at least three states, Cox has described his life on the run as being relatively normal. He's in a stable relationship. He's in some time employment. He's also robbing banks. He's probably on the dole. It was only those times when he was conscious of police being in the street, thought he was perhaps being followed, that he was um, brought back to the reality that he was a, a fugitive. For five years, Cox had managed to stay off the police radar. But in 1981, he was implicated in a hit on a payroll van carrying $327,000 in cash. Roger Rogerson is now a convicted murderer, but then he was part of a crew of detectives on Cox's trail. The closest we got to getting him was uh, some time later, some years later, up near Mwoolamba, and uh, we'd received information that he was uh, on a farm there. And uh, I took a team of guys up there, including some very smart uh, surveillance guys, and uh, we were quite satisfied that he was at this particular property. We liaised with the local police over that night and uh, the next morning. Now, whether someone amongst those other police officers said something stupidly and someone picked it up in the town. By the time he got out of that farm, he was no longer there. Cox and Dean escaped to the quiet suburb of Mount Martha in Melbourne's southeast. January 1983, Cox turns up at Mount Martha, a house occupied by Ian Carroll, former uh, great bookie robber and a uh, very serious crim. Dean's brother-in-law, Ray Bennett, had introduced them years earlier. For a while, the two wanted armed robbers lived under the same roof but eventually they turned their guns on each other. Russell Cox made headlines in 1977 by becoming the only man ever to escape from the supposedly escape-proof Katingal high security unit at Long Bay Jail. He's wanted for questioning about the murder in January of Melbourne painter and docker Ian Carroll at this house in Mount Martha on the Mornington Peninsula. A large cache of weapons was found at the house, one of the biggest illegal gun hauls ever made in Victoria. During the gunfight, Cox had been shot in the thigh, but he and Dean were long gone when police arrived. Helen Dean was a trained nurse and was apparently able to go above and beyond those skills, removing the bullet in Cox's leg, providing him with all of the, the treatment he, he needed. Um, apparently he was up and literally running the next day. But Cox's charmed life on the run was about to come to an end. Two armed men wearing balaclavas entered the Quarry Hotel and shot painter and docker Brian Kane twice, once in the head and chest. He was rushed to hospital but died shortly afterwards. The chief suspect, although never charged, was Russell Cox. Despite being wanted in three states for armed robbery and possible homicide, Cox managed to stay at large for a further six years. His luck ran out in 1988 on a job he'd planned with another fugitive, Ray Denning. Cox rendezvoused with Denning at the Doncaster shopping centre. Security guards there noticed something suspicious, contacted the police. The two prize catchers, criminals Cox and Denning, were taken into custody just before two o'clock this afternoon. Police had responded to a tip that people wearing balaclavas had been seen in two cars that were following an armoured cash delivery van. They intercepted Denning's car and found two Sawnoff .22 rifles and balaclavas, but Cox, after seeing the police, tried to escape through the car park. A policeman armed with a shotgun fired three shots at Cox's car, shattering the windscreen and hitting the door and boot. Cox then lost control of the car, colliding with a brick wall. It was only after Cox was taken to CIB headquarters that police realised the significance of the arrest. One can imagine the excitement 
that this was Australia's most wanted man. There's really no doubt about that. Cox was charged with a series of armed robberies, but he was acquitted for the murder of Ian Carroll, as it could not be proved who fired the first shot. Cox received a sentence of 29 years and four months. From Cox's arrest in 1988 until his eventual parole, he appears to have been the classic model prisoner. He's decided that he's going to have to do this time. In 2004, the parole board granted Cox an early release. Before Cox left prison, he said that he wanted to live a quiet life, that his days of criminality were well and truly behind him. Since his release, Russell Cox has stayed on the police radar, but seems to be living a quiet life with his partner, Helen Dean. 